Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Good evening to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you all to the Christian wake for our mama, late Mrs. Valerie Otsudeko. We pray that the eyes of the Lord will be upon us all. The children, grandchildren, the Lord will take good care of them. And we pray that all of us will grow old and see our children's children in the name of Jesus. You are all welcome. The Lord be with you. We shall stand as we take the opening aim. How great thou art.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Father of all mankind, we are grateful to you for your goodness and for mercies over the family of Otsudeko. Thank you, Lord, for the life and times of late Mama Valerie Otsudeko. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have given her the grace to do, to do while on earth. Thank you, Lord, for giving her the grace to take good care of the children and grandchildren. We rejoice in you because at your own time, you have taken her away. God gave and God has taken away. And we are rejoicing because she has gone at a ripe old age. Accept our thanks and praises in the name of Jesus Christ. It is true that we don't want our loved ones to leave us, but there's nothing we can do. But our prayer is that when your son tarries, we will grow old. See our children's children in the name of Jesus Christ. And so as we are gathered here this evening to sing unto your glory heavenly father we pray that your holy spirit will permit everything that we are going to do here tonight in the name of jesus this gathering is not unto man it is unto you and to remind us that one day a service of song or christian work shall be done for us but before then oh lord Fill us with good virtues. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Father Lord, we pray that the goodies and bounties of the world will not take us from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Grant us the grace to number our days in the name of Jesus Christ. To number our days in wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we pray for those that are still coming on their way. Lord, bring them here safely in the name of Jesus. Everything that we are doing tonight, please, Lord, let mercy prevail in the name of Jesus Christ. And do not judge us according to our misdoings, but look upon the anointed face of your son and remove condemnation from us. And give us the grace to repent and do it right. So that when you will call, Heavenly Father, we have a strict account to give. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, thy power and thy glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's turn to page five. We take Psalm 90 alternately. Psalm 90. Page five. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You, are gone. you turn men back to dust, say you return, O dust, return to dust, O sons of men. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Oh, in the morning, it up new, and 
We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moon. The length of our days is 70 years or 80. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days aright that we may gain our heart. Relent, O Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. That is why I was in the morning, that we may see God and all our days. Make us glad as make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us for as many years as we have seen trouble. Together with the favor of the Lord our God, rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The next aim is on item 4 of page 6 of the program in our hands, O God of Bethel. We shall take that song as we sit.
have chosen the Lord to be our God. It is our prayer this evening that from his very hand, he will pour upon us all his blessings in Jesus' name. We shall therefore call for the first scripture reading, Godfrey Otudeko, to take the first Bible reading. Our first scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to 15. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet, they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been, that which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. This is the word of God. Even when we know that there is a time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die. We are reassured in the words of the Lord that because our Redeemer lives, we too shall live. Let us therefore with that assurance this evening take the next hymn on page 7. I know that my Redeemer lives.
For the second Bible reading, we shall call on Mrs. Tevintayo Gulewe. The second scripture reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of God. We shall now have the solo from Mama's grandniece, Tinele Bang, to surrender Biola land, sweet Biola. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Tennille Pang. I'm the granddaughter of Vincent Roberts and the daughter of Sandra Mitchell. I'm Valerie, I know this uh, grand, grand aunt. And uh, I just remember meeting her a few times growing up as a kid, and I just really remember her smile. And I'm so sorry for her passing, but we hope to see her again. May she rest in peace. And I hope this ministers to you today.
you want to clap, please clap. May God bless our dear sister in the name of Jesus. For the third scripture reading, we shall call up our dear sister, Dr. Mrs. Lydia Iwuchuku, to take the third scripture reading. This reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. But the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. This is the word of God. The scripture says that in everything we should give thanks to him. And one thing we can all collectively talk about God this evening is his faithfulness. Not only in our lives we are living, but even in the life of our dear mother, sister, who had gone to be with God. And so as we stand this evening, we shall declare together the faithfulness of God in the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
please be seated as we invite Ms. Ade Folake Utudeko to take the fourth scripture reading. John 14, chapters 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And when I go, you know the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of God. Praise the Lord. At this time, we want to request that testimonies be given concerning our dear sister, mother and friend, Mama Otudeko. I don't know if we have people who want to give testimonies concerning how she touched their lives while she was here on earth. You can do that by a show of hands so that we can beckon on you to come forward. All right, sir, we have um, Baba there also. We recognize you, so you come forward after uh, there. All right, sir, so you can come forward, sir. And then, but let us be mindful of time so that we can conclude this segment. Um, good evening, everybody. I stand before you to give testimony about my uncle's wife, who is also a mother to me, on the other hand. I live with this woman, and I know her. She was a woman like no other. My uncle couldn't have had a better wife. She embraced everything my uncle embraced. She tolerated everything my uncle tolerated. And she was there for him. My uncle was on the road most of the time. This woman was in the house and she kept the house. She was such a fantastic woman that I can never forget. Whatever, anytime you come to her with problems, she's ready to listen. She's ready to share. She's ready to encourage. She's ready to motivate. And that was Mrs. Valerio Tudeco for you. I could go on and on, but for time, I, I think I have to stop and pray that the God Almighty will bless this noble woman. And I pray the God Almighty will fill the space that she's living in Otudeko's family. She was indeed a lovely wife. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We call on Baba Useni to come for the testimonies. Thereafter, you will, you will come forward, man. Let Baba Useni finish. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Just to say a few words. Uh, we met her, of course, in the show church, and uh, we are all about this same age group, and we were members of the Elders Fellowship. But she was a very distinguished member of the fellowship. About um, 14 years ago, when the fellowship was survived, it was decided that uh, we should have an anthem. And so many people uh, made suggestions. But it was our own suggestion, the hymn on page six, Oh God of Better, that she suggested 
that was accepted. And that song, that hymn, is accepted as the anthem of the Elder Fellowship and is used on every occasion when we have to do something. We pray that Almighty God will stay with her, we read her life, and she will rest in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ forever. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Mom, you can come forward now. Good evening, everyone. I'm standing here speaking on behalf of the Nigerian West Indian Association. Nigerian West Indian Association are women of the West Indies married to Nigerians. And Auntie Val was one of them, a long-standing member of this association, very, very hardworking, very diligent. She was so humble. She always had this beautiful smile on her face. She comes into the meeting and the atmosphere lights up. Always have something nice to say. Whenever there is a need for any assistance, she's always willing and ready. No matter what it is, she's ready to serve. When we used to have our carnival in those days, our home was a workshop for all of us where we go and make our costumes before we start parading the streets of Lagos and end up off Tafabalua Square with a grand parade. You could see she was always there in her costumes, no matter what the costume you give her to wear, she's always ready to wear it. She was a lovely lady, a grandma, a great grandma. I remember when she comes to the meeting, she was tease us and said, those of you who haven't got grandbaby yet, it's, you will soon get, but I'm going to borrow my Timmy Tire for the weekend. And we always have a laugh about that, to say, <laughs> because she's always so proud about her grandchildren. And um, for our own children, she was a great help to them. There was a time when we used to have our children going camping during the summer vacation. And our house in uh, Odobolo, pardon my pronunciation, was a one week camp for our children. And they came back with great stories of having going to a country home and having such wonderful time with one of our outstanding members also, Mrs. Um, Lorraine Animation, who was the camp leader then. Even when auntie became ill, she was always coming to the meeting with her walking stick and her assistants there. And once she comes in, we're always ready and we have fun together. We're really going to miss her, but um, God knows best. We go to her and she's, I remember for her birthday, I was going somewhere, my friend and I, Maisie, were in the, and I said, look, Auntie Val's birthday, we should have been there today. So I called her, I said, Auntie Val, I'm sorry, I won't be there today. We're going, she said, oh no, how can you not come to my birthday? You always come. I said, I'm very sorry but we're going somewhere. She said, there's so much food to eat. What am I going to do with it? I said, don't worry, we'll come and see you soon. Unfortunately, I did not get to see her and that really pains me. But um, we have such great memory of Auntie Val. So much great memory. We wish her safe journey home and we shall see her soon in glory. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we want to appreciate your holy name for the life and times of your daughter, Mama Otudeko. Thank you, O Lord, for a gift to humanity and indeed to the entire world. We thank you, O Lord, because when it has pleased you, you called our home. We therefore pray this evening that as we study your word and look into it, you will speak afresh to our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, that we will not just be hearers of your word this evening, but you will grant us the grace to be doers of such. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Once again, on behalf of the vicar, the venerable Ifeo Kukwevi, we want to commensurate with the family of the Otudekos. And we pray that the Lord who has sustained you thus far will continue with you, will keep you, 
we comfort you in the name of Jesus. We pray that as you have begun this ceremony of giving Mama a befitting burial, we pray that there shall be success in it in the name of Jesus. This evening, briefly, we want to look at the word of God as recorded in Ecclesiastics chapter 7. Ecclesiastics chapter 7 from verse 2. We want to look at the New King James Version and also the um, contemporary English Version as that will also drive home the point this evening. Better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will take it to heart. The contemporary English version has this to say, it is better to go to a funeral than to attend a feast. Funerals remind us that we all must die. We shall look at a short exhortation tagged death, the end of all. Death, the end of all. Now, the, the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes points our attention to the importance and the reason why it is better to be at funerals, to be at the place of mourning, than to be where feasting is taking place. As we all know, the house of mourning is a place where friends and loved ones weep and lament the death of a loved one no matter the person's age nobody ever wants to lose a close person and of course when we look at scripture what quickly comes to mind a passage that quickly comes to mind where this particular concept took place was in john's gospel chapter 11 which of course has the record of the story of the death of Lazarus, a beloved friend of Jesus Christ. We were told that he had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And the scripture mentioned particularly that people came around to console these two sisters on the demise of their brother. At this point in time, relatives, friends, acquaintances came around to comfort them and to mourn with them. We were even told specifically that in John chapter 11 verse 35, which happens to be the shortest verse of scripture, that even Jesus at some point was present there and himself wept. Wept also because of the fact that this man who had died happens to be his beloved friend. When I look at passages of this nature, personally what it points out to me, especially seeing Jesus, God's own incarnate, weeping, means that when we go through situations of this nature, where a loved one dies, and we mourn, we cry, we weep, Jesus understands. He understands our inward weeping and our outward way by which we express such mourning. Why? Because he himself went through same. No wonder when Apostle Paul was talking from the passage read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. What Apostle Paul was saying was that we should, he wasn't saying that we should not mourn or we should not sorrow. The only thing he actually said was that we should not do it the same way the world does. That is, we should not do it in a way that there is no hope. As people would not have hope. Because as Christians, even when we lose a loved one, we are assured of the fact that that is not the end of that person. And so, dear people of God, going back to our text, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 2, Solomon, who happens to be the writer of this book, gave the reason why it is absolutely better 
to go to a house of mourning than to the house of feasting. And that we can see in the second part of verse 2. It says, it reminds us that all must die. For that, but that is the end of all men. And the living will take it to heart. The reason why it is good to go to such places is because it continues to remind us of the fact that for all of us, we have but for a short time to live here on earth. So according to our text, being in the house of mourners provides an opportunity for the living to be faced with the fact that we are all mere mortals. And so none of us will live in this very body forever. It affords us the opportunity to remind ourselves of the fact that it will be our turn sooner or later. No matter what we do, no matter what we try to do, our effort in looking very young every day, someone who is 70 and 80, you say, oh, you are looking 16. Time will tell. Time will tell. Because either you, are, you do everything to package yourself to look younger than your age, the certainty is that you will definitely die. For also some who think that they need to use something to fortify themselves. They could they. We have also found that that can also do what? Die. What I mean by that is that no matter what you call yourself in keeping to fortify yourself not to die, that same person who did it for you also dies. What more? You who it has been done for. What we must however note about death which of course is the main point of this message this evening is that death is not an end to our existence and that is one thing we must take home from here death is not an end to our existence existence continues by us being infinitely better or infinitely worse I repeat our existence continues by us being infinitely better or infinitely what worse we can relate to the statement I have just made now when we recall the parable of the rich man and Lazarus as recorded in Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31 Luke 16 19 to 31 we all know the story very well we were told that there was a rich man who lived in a luxury every day. And of course, there was also another man, a poor man called Lazarus, who was struggling with dogs to eat at the table of this rich man. The Bible said eventually both of them, rich and poor, died. And of course, the rich man eventually found out that Lazarus was at the bosom of Abraham and he made a request that he wants Lazarus to go and tell his brothers to repent so that they will not come to a place of torment where he was presently suffering and being in pain and we are told that Abraham said that is not possible they have prophets like Moses they have books to read that of course can encourage them to live a life that will not make them at the end of the day to end up where he has ended up. When we look at this passage that I have just pointed our attention to, the rich man and Lazarus represent two extreme sides of how people live in this world. You can be rich, you can be poor. But the truth of the fact is that despite these two extreme differences or cases, they both died. Which of course further proves to us that death is inevitable. And so we get to certain places and we say we don't want to talk about it. The reality is that on such occasions like this we have no choice than to talk about it because mama has gone. We can only talk about giving testimonies about how she touched our lives. We are the ones who are still living. 
And to us, we must speak. To us, we must talk about the fact that where do we want to spend our eternity? This passage I appointed our attention to, dear people of God, proves to us that our existence after death can either be better or worse, like I said. And so we must therefore be mindful of how we relate with people the Lord brings our way. I was trying to listen to people who give testimony concerning Mama this evening. And of course, you will realize that for everyone who came across Mama, I usually tell people this, everyone who comes your way, it is the Lord who has brought them your way. And how you treat them matters a lot. We are told that Mama was a good listener, an encourager, a motivator. She opened her home to meetings, to workshops. She was hardworking and diligent herself. All of this put together meant that people who spoke about her this evening had things to say because she did not for any reason just ignore those who came her way. And so, if we want to spend eternity with our maker, those who come our way, the way we treat them matters a lot. Of course, I've said it times without number that the reason why the rich man went to hell wasn't because he was rich. As against people feeling that once you are rich, you cannot make it to heaven. No. The main reason why he went to hell was simply because he had the opportunity of assisting somebody, but he turned the other way. He had the opportunity of giving a fellow neighbor an opportunity to rise from where he was, but he paid no, no attention to it. How on earth will somebody be struggling with your dog to eat? Will you say you did not see him? Will you say you did not know? Will you say you are ignorant of it? But he just felt that he deserves where he is. And that is why how some of us behave. Because many of us, some of us feel that it is hard work that have brought us to where we are. And so that other person must suffer. If certain people had the opportunity that you had while growing up, they will not be where they are today. Many of the things that we are benefiting from as individuals is because of opportunity. If only that man who carries that pompon to go for as a bricklayer, if only he had the education that you, the opportunity of education you had, possibly he will not be there. And so do not look down on anybody to say, oh, he deserves it. When others were reading, where was he? When others were walking, where was he? It may not always be that. It may simply be because of opportunity. If others had the same opportunity with you, I tell you, they could have also been better than you. Praise the Lord. My dear people of God, we have seen therefore that if we indeed we want to spend eternity on the other divide with our maker, then you must be mindful of being generous to the other person whom the Lord brings your way. We must see the possession that the Lord gives to us as an opportunity to extend it to others. Knowing fully well, like Job said in Job chapter 1 verse 21, he said, naked I came to this world. And naked I will do what? I will go. Mama has died. No matter what she had, she is not taking anything with her. The rich man, if he lived with this reality, I'm very sure he would have taken cognizance of Lazarus. The, on a daily basis, and especially with what coronavirus have done to us in recent time, we have come to realize that death of a loved one has taught us that either we work hard or not, at the end of the day, what happens? If we work and acquire and acquire and acquire, we will drop them down. Somebody was saying sometimes ago, when we had the lockdown, many of us were not able to wear the clothes that we have bought with thousands of naira and dollars for a long time. It was just in our what? Wardrobe. When coronavirus came. 
Because there was no place we were going to. There was no place. Many would be on sleepers from morning till night. Because there was nowhere we were going to. And so that has also made us to understand life. The brevity of life. For anybody who is sick before death, you know that, oh, you cannot tell the person what clothes you want to wear on a sick bed. What you want to eat. It is what is brought your way. Let us appreciate the opportunity we have of this life and let us make good use of it by affecting others. What is more, many of the things we have acquired today in this world, you go to some estates, you see how empty those houses are. Because even the children that we feel that we have acquired all of this for, they go abroad and they come back to say, Mommy, this is too big. Daddy, this is too big. We can't come here any longer. And you now realize that all that you have done in acquiring is just but a waste. We are not using them. Many estates, very vacant. And you are not even thinking that anybody, and at the end of the day, you see, people that never even knew how you work for it are the ones that earn it at the end of the day. Let us think very well. People of God, people who are rich will go to heaven. People who are rich will go to hell. People who are poor will also go to heaven or they will also go to hell. So it's not about class or status. Abraham and Job has taught us that with your wealth, you can remain righteous. So there's no school of thought that says that when you are rich, you will go to hell. No! It depends on the way you have lived your life while you are here on earth and how you have touched lives. But of course, if you are poor and you go to hell, it is what? Double tragedy. And like somebody will say, it's not going to be nice for a Nigerian to go to hell. Everything is not working now. And then eventually you now find yourself in hell. Somebody say, God forbid. Aha. So let us work our, our salvation with fear and trembling to make sure that we do everything within our power to make heaven at last with our maker. I looked at the conversation that took place between the rich man and Abraham. And then I realized that the man became so concerned about his brothers even after death. And that said, and I realized that repentance after death makes no meaning. You know, he was caring for his brothers. He was looking for how they would not come to where he was. I would have felt that for such a man, maybe he would have said, let them come and enjoy my company. I mean, let them come and keep my company here. He didn't say that. He said, let them send someone, let Lazarus go and tell them what I am suffering here. But whatever repentance you want cannot be done in the grave. It has become too late. And that was why he was quick to say, Abraham, send someone. Let them repent. It was then I realized that he did not tell Abraham to say, let them give all their belongings. Let them become poor. He didn't say that. He didn't say, he didn't talk about their wealth. What he spoke about was what? Repentance. Because he himself knew the kind of lifestyle his brothers were living. People of God, this evening, let us take time to ask ourselves, have we truly, genuinely repented of our sins? Do we just come to church as though we are just coming as one of those social gatherings? Or we are taking time to say that church is a place where I want to receive, I want to hear how I am. I want to take the step of changing as an individual. Mama's wake up and funeral is giving us that same opportunity this evening to say, that we have another opportunity. That same opportunity that the rich man must have thrown away. This evening, I do, I'm saying to us, do not throw away an opportunity that you have been given by this singular event to say, it doesn't matter. I don't care how I live my life. It shouldn't bother anybody. It bothers somebody because in the first place, it was the one who gave you. My dear people of God, Abraham replied and said, there are prophets, teachers of the law, who are around, who should teach them, and by so doing, 
they should repent. Are you here? And possibly someone is just looking down from heaven to say, Oh, how I wish somebody can just tell this person how he's living to just change. Why? Because the man felt that somebody going from the dead will be the one to change that individual. Why? Because it is possible that you have given up to say, Yes, the moment I got to this body, I'm already saying, ah, They will still talk about this born again, again. Maybe your heart has been hardened to say, We have had this several times. It has been said on several occasions that God is coming, that his, his son is going to come and he has not come. Oh, stop all of this. Hey, don't joke with a time like this. The Bible says that don't take God's slowness for granted to feel that he will not eventually come. He's only waiting for you. He's only waiting for me to repent. And I pray that you will not miss this opportunity this evening in the name of Jesus. I therefore encourage us and exhort us that let us never get too great in life to learn from others and feel that, oh, I'm, I cannot learn from somebody else. I cannot hear what people are saying. Let us do all within our power to study more of what the word of God says. And sometimes not only what the pastor says because we have so many heretical teachings going on. Let us be burying Christians who will not only hear the word of God, but also search the word of God to know the truth. There is so much out there going on, but the opportunity has been given to us through this particular way keep to repent of our sins. And so as we celebrate the life of Mama Otudeko, let us take this message to heart by taking inventory of our lives, our own lives, and the, to make sure that we take the needed correction so that when it's our turn to leave this world, we can continue our existence in that better place with the Lord as said he has gone to prepare for us. It is my prayer that none of us will miss eternity with God at last in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Speak to the Lord this evening. What is it that the Lord has spoken to you about? Just speak to him and say, Lord, I repent of my sins. The Yoruba say, I don't know that I will not get to heaven before I know the truth. Or I will not die before I know the truth. But the grace to know it now and to repent. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word and we pray, O oh Lord, that as we have listened, grant us the grace to make amends in the name of Jesus so that at last we will again reunite with all your children, especially our mama, whom we are celebrating today. This we have asked through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise the Lord. No matter how a man lives his life, one thing is sure. Somebody must live to bury somebody. A mother had the opportunity of having people that would bury her. And it is my prayer, as we pray for the family, friends, and well-wishers, she left behind to bury her. Someone one day, we bury us when we are grown old in Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most precious Father, with a heart full of thanksgiving and appreciation for what you've done in the life of our mother while on earth, we thank you for the life well lived. We thank you for the testimonies we thank you for the children. We thank you for the grandchildren. We thank you for the great grandchildren, for her friends, her well wishers, her colleagues at work, those she met, those she was nice to, and those that took her kindness for granted. We thank you for people 
that are alive to bury her, to mourn her, to say sweet things concerning her. We say may your name be praised forever in Jesus' name. Father, people will be traveling from far and near to grace the burial ceremony of your daughter whom it pleased you to call home in a time like this. And she had left people, children, to bury her. Friends to mourn, brothers and sisters, I pray, Father, as they go on with the burial ceremony, there shall be no casualties. I say there shall be no casualty. Whoever that looks on these ones for evil, Father, blind such eyes. As they are going, whoever that is planning evil for them ahead, they shall wait till eternity. Father, evil shall not befall these ones. When it's happening at the back, they shall be at the front. When it's happening at the front, they shall be at the back. A thousand shall fall by their right hand, ten thousand by their left. Only with their eyes they shall see the reward of the wicked. Only with their ears they will hear what you have done to the wicked. Father, what they will use to bury mama, bless them. None of them shall fall sick. None of them shall go in sorrow after burying the mother. None of them shall have cause to regret. What else ever the case may be, it shall be to your glory. And at the end, we shall have our cause to glorify your name. Like the preacher said, Father, one thing is certain. We shall all die. Sooner or later. Father, now that we are alive, help us. Give us the grace to lead that life that is worthy to spend the eternity with you. Now that we have the chance to right the wrongs, Father, help us. So that at the last, no matter how sweet the testimonies are, we will spend our times with you. Help us, Father. Give us the grace not to take this time of living for granted. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant them journey mercy. Grant them journey mercy, financial buoyancy, good health, all it takes for a success for this barrier, do it for them. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Good evening to you all. Once again, we welcome you all to our Savior's Church. May the eyes of the Lord be upon you all in Jesus' name. Please, the steward should please stop that. We have not finished the service. Please, leave food alone for now. Later, we come to that. It's not yet item seven. Is it on the program? Is item seven on the program? They leave that for now. Hallelujah. We are grateful to God for the life and times of Mama. Mama lived a glorious life, a blessed life. Whenever we go there for communion, the house is neat and tidy. Can you please put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? Because these children, they are good children. That is why Mama's home is neat and tidy. And because of the Corona Palava, I always visit the visitor's toilet to wash my hands before administering communion. Whenever I get to the toilet, it's neat and tidy as well. So it means that you have taken good care of mama. Your children will take good care of you in Jesus' name. Those of us who are leaving our parents in the village and enjoy ourselves in Lagos, 
when mama and papa died over there, the gorgeous attire, the best dress, that is all we put on and we did not take good care of them. I pray that the good Lord will take good care of us, we take good care of our children and at the same time, when death shall come knocking, we have a good account to give in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama Marigold, where are you? She is always reminding us. Mama today could go and give her communion. No. And whenever we are going there, we surely branch at her place. But this time around, please, Mama, sit down. This time around, she has relocated to the children's place. When are you going back to Zuru Lady? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sir, what's your name, sir? Yes. Edward. You are Edmund. Okay. You are always in Nigeria. Yeah, on and off, but most times I do meet you there. And once I met him, but this man I've not seen him before. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have tried your best. You have really, really tried your best. So mama is gone. Are you going to abandon our saviors? Yeah, but then we've not been seeing you. <laughs> Mama, I know you are the cathedral. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, we want to see, whenever both of you come back to Nigeria, let's see you. But I know that you are always in Nigeria than the two of them. So, all the time, let's see you at our saviors. Are you the one that is clocking 60? Oh, you have clocked 60. Uh, because of Mama's demise, that is why we did not celebrate it. Don't worry, we celebrate everything together. The day you are giving, uh, the day you are giving, uh, doing the Thanksgiving after funeral service, after burial, we will do everything together. So, Mr. Okang, thank you very, very much. God bless you, Kola. Thank you very much. The choir members, God bless you all in Jesus' name. Photographers and photogrammers, God bless you all. The stewards, thank you very much. I did not insult you, but let's do the right thing at the right time. God bless you in Jesus' name. And I want to say thank you to Reverend Bola Oshinukpebi, who break the word. Thank you very much. And with me, with me is Reverend Emmanuel Modi, this is the first service of songs that he's having in our saviors. So we implore you, leave COVID-19 alone, go back to church. COVID-19 is gone totally and it will never have any effect upon you in the name of Jesus. You will live hale and hearty. You will live long in the name of Jesus Christ. But please, your handbag, keep it well. Your phone, keep it well. Because we have all these evil people around. They, they will dress well as if they have come to wake people. But at the end of the day, God will expose such. We are still waiting for some of them to come back. Because there is CCTV here. So, don't worry if you should pick anything from here. CCTV will expose you before God exposes you. Because we know that we still come back and we note that you are the one. So God bless you all. As you travel back home, the good Lord will go with you. It's a pity we won't be able to go. But whatever the case may be, when you come back, we'll all 
come back to say thank you, Jesus. You will go in peace and come back in peace. Thank you very, very much for coming. God bless you all. Every day we have communion here. When you are on the island, you can join us at 7.15 a.m. from Monday to Friday. And on Sunday, 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock for our services. On Wednesday's prayer meeting, 6 p.m. On, on Friday's Bible study, 6 p.m. And you can join us online at any of these programs. And on Monday, Wednesdays and Friday, 12 noon, we are online. You can join us even physically. God bless you all in Jesus' name. So who is going to give us the vote of thanks? choir can help me with this. Um, I want to sing a little bit. <laughs> Count your blessings, them one by one. Count your blessings, what God has done. Count your blessings. Them that one by one, and as you walk the Lord, we have to be grateful for everything God has done for us. Um, it is like a crime to be ungrateful. Um, like the Yoruba people say, um, an ungrateful person is like a thief that comes in the night and steals everything you own. You can just imagine how painful that is. So it would be wrong for us not to show gratitude to everybody here today who has helped and made sure that today has been successful. And they've also given us a lot of things and blessed us and helped us to make sure that this funeral is successful. I want to thank my uncles I want to start with Baba Otus. He's in the UK at the moment, and um, his blessings are surely felt. We thank you very much. Uh, Uncle Bero Otudeko, your support is appreciated. I want to thank our Uncle Oba Otudeko. We appreciate you also. Our Uncle Otoba Alex Onobanjo is also here today. We thank you so much for your support and your steadfastness in this family. We thank Uncle Shanu Otudeko, who is in Ibadan. Our loving Uncle Leke also. We thank you, Uncle Leke Otudeko. We also thank Uncle Tubosun, who has stood by us throughout in this family. Thank you very much. You've been very supportive, and we all love you. We thank our good friend, Shola Adebajo, as we call Lord Babas, and also his wife here, Lady Babas. Thank you very much. You've been really supportive to this family. God bless you.
Our Savior's Church Elders Forum, we thank you so much. We thank you for making things happen. Fountain of Life, Udogbolu, we thank you. The Jamaican West Indian Association, we thank you so much for your support and guidance through all this. Um, Niger wives as well. I hope I don't forget that. You know, we thank you so much. Um, I think these two associations with made my mom's life um, quite rich. And, um, you know, she always had a community. That was her family. I mean, because she left her family in Jamaica, in the UK, to follow my dad and come to Nigeria. Spent all this long time in Nigeria, over 60 something years. And um, she left her family and went with her husband. So the family that she has here in West Indian Association and Niger Wives were very supportive, you know? So uh, we thank you so much. And we must continue to communicate and keep in touch. Um, I want to also thank my friends, our friends, uh, my brothers and Gregory's friends. Thank you so much for your help. My brother here, he also went to Methodist Boys High School. We thank you for his friends and their community. My King's College friends, we thank you. Um, friends and well-wishers, so many of you, I can't mention everybody's name, but um, I know that you've been here for us and you've been supportive. God, continue to bless you. Amen. Um, my homies, my homies, you've been very dear to me as friends. You all know my homies, my good friends. Um, we lost one of our homies last year. Um, it's been very painful to us because um, it appears it's a sign of the time at the ages we are all getting to 50. And um, we were hoping that we will be having all these kind of things when we get to 70, before we start losing our friends. But unfortunately, we lost a dear friend called, his name is Shaki Oluwo. Shaki Omo Eske Oluwo. May his soul rest in peace. We, I, I just had to honor him today. The last time that um, he was, he saw Mama, was on Mama's um, 85th birthday. And um, we had this little gathering in the house in Modupe Johnson and he came. And um, we were enjoying ourselves as we normally do. And then Mama calls me into the bedroom, into her bedroom and said, Shiki, he's such a good boy, you know. I really love that boy. I said, ah, mommy, what happened? He said, ah, look at this big envelope he just gave me now. I thought, oh, I mean, it's expected of Shiki. Shiki is just the kind of person that would do such a thing. So, you know, we all miss him. We miss him so much. And um, we're going to miss Mama too. And we are still missing Mama now. So Mama and Shaky, you are together. God bless you, you know. On that note, I will thank God for making today a success. I will also 
like to thank my wife for coping with me. Thank you very much, Ade. And my entire family, I love you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. And I want to wish everybody a safe journey back home. Thank you. And one more thing. Can, can you just be seated so that you can be giving your little gifts, you know, and uh, what shall I? We still have, yeah, please, everybody be seated. And you're not going home yet. The night of tribute is still going to happen, apparently. Thank you very much. Uh, don't give me a mic. Oh, I can't put it down. I don't, I don't know how to put that way back. <laughs> Thank you so much. We take the hymn on page 12, item 17. Abide with me, fast falls the even tide.
you. Let us pray. We give you all glory, honor, and adoration, O Lord our God, for seeing us through this service. The second part, the night of tribute, will soon be on. And we say you are good, you are kind, you are generous. Thank you, Lord, for the life and times of Mama. Thank you, Lord, for the children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren as well. Thank you for every one of us present here tonight. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. And so we pray that if Christ tarries, we grow old and see our children's children. And let this be in our mind that Christ Jesus will come with a shout of acclamation. Angels and archangel, archangels will accompany him. Those that have died will rise up first. And those of us still on earth will meet him in the sky. This is our faith. You will not derail. Satan will not deceive you. Jesus Christ has gone up to prepare a place for us. That where he is will be. Let that be a portion. You are rapturable. You will not go the other way. Holy Spirit will guide and guard you. And per adventure, you are in one problem or the other. As we are here tonight, the Spirit of the living God will minister to you. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will touch you. And whatever the fear, it shall be taken away. The grace to trust in him and put your faith in him the good Lord will give it to you. As we go back to our different destination, Lord, go with us. Let no evil befall us. In the name of Jesus, no disease, no pandemic, no epidemic will come near you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as we go to bed tonight, may we sleep well, wake up well, and unto God's mighty protection, we commit you all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine mercifully upon you and give you peace in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, in whatever you do now and evermore. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. Take good care of your belongings. Hello, please the elders of our Savior's Church and the West Indians. I would like you all to wait, please.
Hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please, in light of tributes, we won't take too much of your time. Just uh, half an hour. Grace of Philly. <laughs> Hello, darling. How are you? I saw Duni just now. Ah, Moji. Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please indulge me for another half hour. We want to start the night of tributes. Nights of tribute. Please sit down. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to take too much of your time. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We won't take too much of your time. Yinka, please sit down. Yinka, Oshobu, sit down. Bankoli Anima Shang, please sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The night of tribute will start now. Will start now. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Mrs. Bali, please sit down. Mrs. Bali, please sit down. Colin Sapapunam, please sit down. Hey, Joe, I take what? I'm about to 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 take what? i Ladies and gentlemen, can we please be seated? to commence the night of tribute. We're going to have, we're going to start the night of tribute by asking one of Mama's best friends. She was Mama's daughter, a friend, and a confidant. May I please call on Dr. Mrs. Adebigbe Adebaju, Lady Babas, to please give her tribute. Thank you. A round of applause for her, please. Can we all be seated? Thank you. Good evening. Grandma, Ed. good evening, everybody. 
Um, for those who don't know who I am, I'm one of Grandma's daughters. Grandma was very, very special to me. We became especially close after my mother died. And then after Papa died, we just used to sit together. I, especially, I remember when Papa died. I mean, she just kept telling me, Bimpe, who gonna fight me now? Who me gonna fight now? And she will cry, 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 and I will, you know, console her and everything. Grandma was kind. She was loving. She was, in fact, I'm very upset with her because usually she calls me for every medical emergency she has. But that was the only time that she didn't call me and she called Eddie and she died. So, Eddie, I don't know what you did. If grandma had called me, she would have still been alive. But mama was lovely and we will miss her. I will miss sitting in grandpa's chair and gisting with her. May her lovely soul rest in perfect peace. A round of applause for her. Can we please be seated? Can we all settle down, please? Next to give her tribute is Mama's goddaughter, Mrs. Janet Anosike. Anosike. Thank you. Good evening. And um, I had called Auntie Val on the 21st, and um, she didn't pick up, which was very, very unlike her. And then I proceeded to send her a Christmas song, Feliz Navida, still no reply. And um, <clears throat> I remember I was supposed to take fish pepper soup to her for Christmas, and I remember her telling me that she doesn't eat fish that hasn't got scales. So we're trying to look for that. Unfortunately, the next call I got was from Eddie, saying that she had passed on. Um, when I lost my mom, Auntie Val stood in. She called me almost every week. I remember when she heard that I had COVID and um, I was in the isolation center. She was crying and I was encouraging her. Um, when I got a text, I think from Godfrey too, that I was going to take a reading tomorrow my normal self would be to say no, but I have to honor her. She was my godmother, and um, she used to virtually call me to remind me to take my medication, and that was exactly what my mom used to do. Auntie Val is gone, but like Eddie said, the family is still here. May she rest in perfect peace. I, I um, should say this. The love she extended to my husband is the, love, the same love she had for me. She would always call me. He, didn't, he doesn't even know this. And tell me, if he says this, just do this. If he does these specific things. And she said, we're here. And we'll always back you up. Sleep on, mom. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. A round of applause for her, please. And can we please settle down? There's a lot of noise at the back. Next to give her tribute will be Mama's sister, friend, Cousin, Mama Otus. 
Mrs. Ronke Otudeko, can you please come forward? While she's coming, can we please settle down? Can we have the aisle cleared, please? A round of applause for her as she walks in, please. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for coming along for this uh, uncertain occasion because I didn't think it's uh, uh, a thing that uh, I should be saying now. But I just have a little to say about my maiden. Mama Edi, she was a woman. I cannot able to describe. Because when she was alive, she happens to be a, a nice woman. I think when she was alive, I got to know her when I was at the age of 23, when I had my, my first son. She took me in as a mother. It was her that I know as a mother. Because as at that time, when my husband, I got to, I got together with my husband. He took me down to Modupe Johnson to meet the family. I met the family, who happens to be Babedi. We call them Babedi. But I did, uh, uh, Godfrey is always grumbling about calling Babedi that we are supposed to call Baba Godfrey. But uh, unfortunately, it is I get to know the family. So Godfrey, please don't be annoyed about this. So where I'm going is when I got to meet my maiden. We were doing naming ceremony of my Olubori, Oluabori on Goku. She's the one who took me in. She welcomed me in. She did everything a mother can do for a daughter. So when I was about to join my husband in, in London, Mama Edi and Baba Edi, they are the ones that were there for me. Baba Edi, when he wanted to you know, my passport was organizing me, my passport for me. So she, he told Mamedi that, uh, Mama, Mamedi, what shall we do about uh, getting a passport for Mama Bori? So Mama Edi said, uh -uh, that's a simple thing to do. Let's go for it. So it's Mamedi that introduced me to all this because I was naive as at that time. I was only 23. So she sat me down. She said to me, now you are going to England. This is how it goes. She advised me in details as a mother. Ever since then, we've been together, either in thick or thin. I cry on her shoulder, she calls me, she talks to me like, a, like my mother. So I do appreciate her so much. If I should say anything about my lady, she's been there for me all my life. Now I am 66. When I turned 66, my lady called me. You said, Mama Bori, you're a grandma now. So, 
just take it easy. You go there, she still advised me, she still talked to me. The last day I saw her, I came to Moduka Johnson when I arrived from London. I saw her, she wasn't feeling well. Even before then, when we were about to, uh, to bury Babedi, we saw each other at Bolu. She wasn't doing well. I was so sad. I had to call her. Mama, come on, get up. Why are you putting yourself down like, come on, get up, get up. Let's do it. I walked her. You know, she did all what I, I told her. She was doing the exercise. We did the exercise. She was just on, on point as at that time. But when I came back now, I saw that she has, you know, she wasn't Mamedi that I knew. So about how many uh, was, anyway, I think it's about two Sundays to the day she died. I was at Wadukwa uh, Johnson. We were talking. She said it's her birthday next week. I said, all right, Mama. So what are we doing for your birthday? He said, Mama Bori, I don't know. What do you think I should do? I said, well, that's not, we have to have a party and you're going to get up and you're going to dance. He said, all right, Mama Bori. So I got her up, I was walking out. Then she said, Mama Bori, I can't walk, I can't do it. I said, you must do it. You must do it. Then we walked from the sitting room to the kitchen. She helped herself. So I bet they come up. I wasn't able to go to the birthday because I wasn't feeling 100% on that day. It happens to be the following week, I was told she was uh, taken to the hospital. I felt so bad. I said, this woman, what's wrong? I said, well, before the end of the week, I heard that she was dead. So that really gets me down. I said, this woman that I promised I'll be seeing her. So she's gone just like that. So, well, anyway. This is what really happened. The Lord has taken her away, but we did not forget her. She's still here with us because Mamedi happens to be a very nice woman, a woman that you can cry on her shoulder. And she's been there for me all my life. I'm supposed to travel today back to England, but because of this occasion, I mean, because of this burial, some of praise, I said no. I have to postpone my going, which I did, and I'm here today to witness it. So, may Mama's soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I've been instructed to ask Mr. and Mrs. Edio Tuteko to please come to the front to sit down. Please sit down, sir. Sit down, yes. You can't be busy when there's a tribute going on. The next speaker is someone who is very close to the Otudeko family. I have the pleasure of inviting Ye or no banjo to please come to the I hear she's left. So one of Mama's children, Tina Uwanko, should please come forward. Good evening, everybody. My name is Tina Wonko. Um, I know Mama. Um, I've been living with Mama for about 10 years plus now. I moved in in 2011. 
and um, we never had landlady tenant relationship. Our relationship was based on motherly and a daughter relationship. I was close to Mama. We do virtually everything together. We go to market together. I follow her to events sometimes. If she's going to hospital, I follow her, sometimes with her car or my own. We have a cordial relationship. Even before daddy died, all of them, they wake on me as if I'm their own child. From the, virtually everything we do together, there are some events in the house that I will never forget. When I moved into the house, before I moved in anyway, I decided to do some renovations. So first week, second week, daddy was calling me, Tina, come and move into your house. You are paid now. I said, daddy, they've not finished the job. So the upper week, which made the third week, I came to the apartment. I was what, supervising what the workers were doing. Daddy came in with mama. Daddy was surprised. He said, Tina, you have changed the whole place. It's like Dodan Balak's. So daddy prayed for me. He said, the way you build my own house, God will build your own house. I will never forget that. And there are some things I learned from two of them. They are very close, very united. I've never seen husband and wife that we are like that. Daddy was caring, you know, always pampering mama, and mama was submissive. So as daddy left, he continued, the relationship continued like that. Anyway, as two of them has left, God knows the best. But my take from their life, mama, since I moved into that apartment, I've never seen mama quarrel with anybody. Unlike most women, we know one person we visit, you start shouting and quarreling, Mama, I've never seen Mama quarrel with anybody. She's a peaceful, uh, she was a, a peacemaker, a peaceful woman, and she died peacefully. I pray that God will give us the fortitude to bear the loss and the gap, two of them, the vacuum they left behind, that God will fill it back in our lives. May their soul rest in peace. Thank you very much, Tina. Next to give her tribute is Mama's daughter, Yeye Onobanjo. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Soji, Godfrey, and uh, Eddie. Um, I first of all want to say thank you to God for allowing us to know Mama. Mama, when I married my husband, Olubenga Alex Onobanjo. My mother was the one that welcomed me into the family. She told me I was a daughter she never had. We had a beautiful relationship. She was very caring. She doted on me. She allowed me to know the Otudeko dynasty. How to behave. Who to be friends with who to be careful with, all this she taught me. Um, it was a pity that towards the end of our years, we drifted apart. For some circumstances, that was beyond both our control. But um, 
She nurtured me for 40 years. 46 years this year that I've been married to my husband. Mama was in my life from day one. And anything that has to do with me and my children, she guided jealously. Uh, Mama was a loving mother to her three sons. And when the ladies came in, the way she accepted me was how she accepted them. In life, we are all passing through. Mama, coming from a foreign country and being married to a Nigerian was a, was, must have been very difficult for her to settle in. But if you don't really know that she, had, wasn't, she, didn't, she grew up in Nigeria, you'll probably think that she was brought up in Nigeria because she blended with every of our culture. My mom doted on my children. She was passionate about my grandchildren. And one thing she always says to me is, Larry, be patient. It's not an easy, this family, they're not easy, but you will get through. I will not, but pray for daddy's soul as well, because without daddy, mommy probably wouldn't have accepted me the way she did. And all I have to say is, she is no more, but the legacy of peace, of kindness, of love that she always gave to everybody that enters Modupe Johnson will continue to trail our children. So Godfrey, Eddie, Soji, and your beautiful wives. All the good things your mother did, my mama, will continue to follow you. I'm so happy you could all come home because in some cases, if it had happened during COVID, this would not have been able to take place. So we thank God. We have a cause to say thank you to God. And I know Mama has joined God to join her husband, who she loves passionately. On behalf of my children, my girls, and myself, I would like to say thank you to Mama, wherever you are now. But I know you're in the hands of Jesus. He will protect all that you left behind. Nothing will happen to all your children. Doors will open more for you. Your children will be greater than you are in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to appreciate everybody that was here today. Like the Yoruba will say, it will be well with us. It is well with us. So I just want to close by saying thank you to Mama. Thank you to Mama. Thank you to Mama Eji, as she's fondly called. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. See you on Thursday. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Ma. So we're going to have tributes from two more speakers, one of which will be one of the children. And before then, I'd like to have Temitokwe Utudeko to please give her tribute. Thank you. Temitakwe, can you please come forward?
Um, our grandma was a great lady. Um, she was very loving and kind. Um, we're so happy that we got to spend her last birthday with her, myself, my sister, Ariana, her great granddaughter. Um, Thank you all so much for coming. Um, 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 we have so many fun and loving memories of my grandma um, in Suliri. We would go every Sunday for family dinners. We'd go with her to her. Jamaican events. Um, they were always loads of fun. She would always make us dress up for carnival. <laughs> um, so we have so many fun and loving memories of her and we hope she rests in peace with my grandpa. Thank you. Thank you, Temitokwe. Now I'll call on Mama's son. Toji, so don't walk away. No, so Child. Um, there's a bit of, anyway. Um, I've been asked to call on Dr. Senator Larry Tejosho who Amma prayed for before she passed. Um, can you please go for comfort, sir? A round of applause as he approaches. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's going to be a very short one. Uh, I think my, my claim for this particular pulpit is because of this special prayer Mama gave me just about uh, two weeks before she passed. And I believe that prayer also made it uh, possible for me to be uh, the second person to see her on her deathbed. Um, Edmund left me. We were having dinner at Ulala for, for the young ones that know Ulala. And uh, in a, about 10 minutes later, he called me that Mama has gone. So I had to quickly join him at St. Nicholas Hospital. And of course, as a medical practitioner that doesn't practice anymore, I was able to confirm that Mama has surely gone to be with the Lord. Well, the most important aspect of this tribute is the fact that uh, I represented Godfrey and Soji in Nigeria, because I was always in Surulere with Edmund all the time. They still have to pay me for that. Uh, of course, a lovely mother. She happens to be a nurse, just like my mother, and they were practicing their nursing profession at the Nigerian Railway Corporation at the same time. So they were colleagues and good friends, just the way myself and Edmund are very close brothers. Um, I believe I got that special prayer on that day because I normally go to Surulere to see Edmund nearly every week. And because Mama doesn't like air conditioner, we stay in the other room where the air conditioner was and she was always in the other room but on this special day that i called edmund said i should say hello to her as if he knew i need to talk to her for the last time and she got the phone and she the prayer she gave me that day just like my late grandmother i was wondering 
Uh, only the deep can call to the deep, but she said some special things on that day that I was wondering why this prayer, is it my birthday or what happened? But I thank God that I received this last blessings from Mama, and I know that there's a reason for that special prayer, and I can just pray that Mama will continue to rest in the bosom of our Lord, and we, the children that she left behind, we shall only have good things to remember about Mama, and we will always try to emulate all the good things we've had today about Mama. May our soul continue to rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Dr. Larry Tejojo. The last speaker will be Mama's daughter, Mrs. Beatrice Otudeko. A round of applause for her, please. Good evening to everybody. Um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking time out to attend Mama's service of song. We're truly grateful and we're truly humbled at the amount of people that have turned out today, despite all of the um, instances happening in, in, with COVID. Um, Mama's association, some of her friends who got into their car and came to say their, their last farewells to, to our mother. I think all three of us, all three wives, myself, Joe Oturako and Shade Oturako, are very fortunate to have had such a mother-in-law. As many of you all have spoken, she was a, a loving woman and accepted us for who we were. It doesn't matter what type of personality we had, she just took us for who she was. And as a mother-in-law, she allowed us to be who we wanted to be and we were very fortunate and very grateful for her. She loved all of her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. And every time she'd call, us, she'll be talking about her grandchildren and how much joy they brought to her. I know that she touched many people here, as a lot of people have said. She, they, she took them in, regardless of, of what their situation was, and looked after them and cared for them. And this is a woman who wasn't even from Nigeria. She came from a, a completely different country, she had her challenges while she was here, but she, forget, she, she didn't worry about that. She just looked after everybody that came into her life. Mama, we will all miss you. On behalf of everyone, we will really miss you. We will remember all the good times and the memory, and we will try our best to live the legacy that you have left behind. Um, as a daughter-in-law, I'm, I'm privileged to have had both my um, parents-in-law as um, parents-in-law that were really caring about everybody, about their, their wives, and they took us as their daughters. Um, they loved their grandchildren and adored their great-grandchildren. Mama, may your soul rest in perfect peace, and may you be cuddled in the arms of your loving husband. Rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. To close this segment of this night of tribute, I'm going to ask my boy, Bros Ed Olufi Otudeko, to give the closing remarks. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Mr. Odulaja, for 
assisting me this arduous task. I think that we have jointly uh, done very well. Uh, we've got a family far and wide to speak. And um, I'm humbled by this um, awesome turnout of friends, family, well wishers, old schoolmates, you know, but I, um, I, I thank God that um, it has turned out like this. And uh, therefore, I want to thank you all for coming this evening, for making this uh, a memorable event. Uh, so I want to close these remarks by praying that for journey messages on your way back home, everyone, we will um, join us on Thursday morning for the funeral service. I hope you can all make it as well. Uh, our color codes are white. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much.